Well, hey everyone, it's me, Eric Kimball. We're having our first snowstorm of the year here in the Finger Lakes region of upstate New York. I really wasn't expecting this much snow. Our power is gone, it's out. We can see the problem, there's a, there's a line down and it's down in other places around here. So I don't think we're a top priority. What I wanna do in this video, this is a good opportunity, is show you a way to hook your generator to your house without the transfer switch and all the other complicated stuff. A real simple way of doing it. I'm gonna get my generator out, I'm gonna hook it up and I'm gonna show you. Now in my shop here, I have a propane stove and I got my small jackery on that. That'll run that for several hours. I've got a bigger jackery and I can charge the jackeries. Uh, so we're kind of, you know, got multiple options here to keep uh, some power on, emergency power. I'm going to get my generator out and show you this hookup idea. I, I have not seen it on YouTube. I think it's a good idea. I mean, I've done it, I've had it for 20 plus years and it works. This generator Honda EG2500, it's not a big one but it's adequate and that room there is heated. So this should start up. That's the beauty of Hondas. They start up pretty easily, but I will tell you that uh, I haven't started this for months. This will be a true test of, uh, of the Honda, right? I purchased this in 1999. Y2K was coming. We were concerned about losing our power. Yeah, I've got fuel in there and I uh, did the hookup to the house that I'm gonna show you. Very simple, adequate hookup for uh, emergency generator. Let's see, we'll turn it on and uh, we'll choke it, I think. Yeah, right there's the choke. Gas is on. Okay. Oh, come on, it wants to. All right, well, I fussed around with it for about five minutes and pulled and started right up. So this is old. This is 25 years old. What's causing it not to run smoothly is the choke. Let me down a little here, but it's a good generator. All right. Bang garden cart, incredibly handy. This is just one example. Okay, what I have here is a 12 gauge power cord. It's not a long one, it's a short one, and it's 12 gauge. I would not use anything less. All I do to power up my house is plug this into the generator. This is a 110 only, this is not a 220. And the other end of the cord goes into this box, this outlet. I don't know what you call them. I'm gonna close up and show you a more modern version of this that I bought because I wanna uh, do the same thing here over on my shop to power a freezer in there. This is a, like a female end, right? And this is a male end in this box. So they just uh, go together, get it going the right way. And uh, come on now, there we go. So then to power my house, all I do is uh, start the generator up and then I'll show you what I got going on inside. Let's see if we can get this started on the first pull, on. Do I need to choke it? Well, let's try it without. Okay, let's try it with. That's the way it's supposed to work. When I go into my house, we have a like a back room. Put the boots and the shoes and, the, and uh, stuff like that. I've got a small freezer there. But what I have here that I wanna show you is right there. Those are hot. 
Those will power anything that I plug into there. My uh, little freezer over here on the left, down into my kitchen. We've got the refrigerator. And then, this is my small basement. We have a pantry with a, with a door hatch here. It goes down over the floor, uh, over the opening, I should say, so that we can get into the pantry up above, all up there. We've got a little basement here. There's the big thing, that pressure tank and the pump that's in the well. What you see here, I've got that pressure tank and that well pump running here off of the generator. It's a 110 volt submersible pump and this generator will handle it. So in an emergency situation when I want to hook up the generator, I plug in here. Otherwise, that's the power from the uh, power company coming in through the main breaker panel. Now I've got the water heater of course down here. I got flashlights on my hat. That's where the light's coming from. I got a sub panel, but I don't care about hot water, you know, in an emergency situation, running water for toilets, for the sink, for drinking. That's important. And, and, and actually it isn't even important to us that we have running water for a toilet. It's nice. It's desirable, of course, but we have a sawdust toilet uh, for backup and we used it uh, one summer. It was the summer of 1999. Used that sawdust toilet. Five people in the family then. It worked for like two months till we got more water in our well. So there's how I do it. I think it's a valid idea for a low-tech, simple way of getting power from your generator outside to a few circuits inside. We're putting parallel circuits in. Romex wire, 12 gauge is what I used to a couple of receptacles. I had a electrical inspector in my basement once and I explained to him what I had done and he said, yeah, nothing wrong with that, that's fine. We're not dealing with the whole house current, the breaker box and all that, completely separate. Just enough uh, receptacles to run the essential things in, a, in an emergency. I would love to have a whole house generator that kicks on automatically when the power goes out. I know several people will have those, but I can't justify the cost of that. Keep it simple. I think some people watching this may wonder about and question whether a 2500 watt generator will provide enough starting wattage for the submersible pump. Because you know when a motor starts up, the, the power uh, demand spikes. It works in my instance, but uh, it, the pump I have is a 8.1 amp, 115 volt, half horsepower pump. Now, just recently, last summer, a few months ago, I bought a, a smaller Honda generator, a EU2200i. The power goes out here frequently, and I believe there's a time coming when the power's gonna go out for a long time. We're talking weeks, we're talking months. It could go out for years. I could get by a few weeks with the setup that I have. I have gas, you know, in storage I rotate through. We're not talking power the whole house and live like everything's fine. We're talking enough power to make life easier until the power comes on, if it comes on. Now, what if it doesn't come on? Well, we can deal with that. I've got a, a well bucket, uh, a well bucket. Yeah, that's what you call it. I've got a tripod. I'm ready to pull my pump and put a well bucket and get water that way for myself, my kids, my family, my neighbors. We'll have water. Or I have a crick. It's, I'd have to work at it because it's down a ways, but I have a crick. I've got pails. We can get water. I've also got barrels, okay? And I made a video about the siphon barrel water storage idea that my friend Steve Lonsky created, never seen it before, made a video about it. And I'll put a link below to that video so you can see. I can have uh, like 200 gallons plus of water storage with drums, plastic drums that I have and the siphon tubes, which I have, it's for rainwater. The world that we live in is pretty uncertain. The power is going to go out for whatever reason. Infrastructure breakdown, EMP, storms, you know it's going to happen. So I've just given you some ideas to 
get by. I welcome your comments, and I thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all the best with your electrical power supply in the years ahead. See you in the next one.